I'm Angelisa and today we're going to look over my snowmobile and all of the modifications that I have done to set my sled up for me because I am a shorter woman rider. I'm all about working smarter and not harder and that is why I've done a few modifications, a few tweaks to make my snowmobiling experience and riding just a little bit better. We all know that sledding can be a very hard sport to learn. So why not invest or take the time to learn different products, different modifications and different tweaks to help us get to be a better rider. And before we begin, I am riding a 2021 Polaris Chaos. It is an 850 on a 155 inch track and I absolutely love it. So here are my five modifications that I have done to set up my snowmobile to fit me because I am a shorter rider. In reference, I am shy of five feet. And this is me next to my sled. You can see I'm not very tall, <laughs> clearly. And so I need the leverage to toss the snowmobile around. I don't wanna fight with it. It should work with me. And all of these modifications that I have done work with me to be that better rider that I want to be. Number one, we're going to start off with my seat. Now, this is something that can be overlooked, but seats make such a big difference. I am using the Skins Protective Gear. This is an extreme low profile seat, and it helps me hop my feet from one side to the other, so I'm not getting hung up with the stock seat. I do have my stock seat with me, and I'm gonna show you the difference between the extreme low profile and the stock. Hold on. All right, I got my stock Polaris seat here, and I'm gonna show you the difference. So we got the skins, and this is how high it would sit if we had my stock seat on. That is a pretty big difference. I'll go on the other side so you can see. That's the difference there between the stock and the Skins Protective Gear seat. Skins make a low profile seat for all of the brands. Um, I'm not sure about Articat and Yamaha, but I do know they make it for Skidoo and obviously for Polaris. When I was riding a Skidoo, I did switch my stock seat over to a extreme low profile seat. There's extreme low profile, low profile, medium profile, and then I don't know, there's a whole bunch of different profiles, but I got the extreme, which means the lowest of low profiles of seats. Makes a huge difference. It definitely made a huge difference with my riding, as I said, from hopping one foot from the running boards to the other running board. I didn't I wasn't getting my feet all hung up on my seats. And it actually looks like I'm standing up the entire time. I had coaches yell at me <laughs> thinking I was sitting when I was doing my jumps or if I was dropping cliffs. And they said it looked like I was sitting on my seat. But that's just how high the seat was because it looked like I was sitting. Anyways, moral of the story. It makes me look cooler it makes me look like i'm standing up and it just really does help me with all of my riding and like i said getting my feet over up and over it so i can maneuver my sled much better okay so that was number one number two is a heavy duty bumper for your front of the sled i had one <laughs> But then I hit a tree and it got damaged. It got wrecked because it took the hit and it saved my sled. If you're going to listen to anyone about customizing your sled, please let it be me because I have really put my sleds to the test and I've really tested a lot of these products. And so the heavy duty bumper saved my sled when I did hit a tree head on at mock speed. If I didn't have that heavy duty bumper on, my sled would have been totaled and I would have needed a helicopter to come rescue my sled and get it out of the backcountry. Because of that heavy duty bumper, it took a lot of the impact. And like I said, it damaged the bumper, but saved my machine. Now there was a few things I needed to do to get the plastics back, just with a bit of a heat gun. Uh, the guys over at Grizzly Lodge, the guides there, they helped me with 
fixing up my sled. But like I said, the heavy duty bumper was and is the the best investment that you can make, especially if you're just getting into sledding. I would say make that your top priority is a heavy duty bumper. Now, I haven't really been riding the past couple of years, extreme riding. So I haven't had the chance to even get a new one and replace replace the bumper that I have now. But uh, next year, I do plan on getting back into some jumps and drops and dipping into the trees again. So that is going to be my first investment when I get back on the saddle. Honestly, those trees can pop out of nowhere and I call them snow dragons and they just pop out of snow anywhere, everywhere. And it's so easy to hit a tree. So a heavy duty bumper is going to save you and it's going to save your machine. I guarantee it. Number three on my list is a GGB exhaust quiet can and it really shed a lot of weight on my snowmobile. Sleds can range between 400 to 500 pounds plus and so shedding weight can help a ton especially for us shorter riders to get that sled on edge so it's not like we're fighting the machine just to maneuver it. So if you can shed some weight on your sled let it be the can. GGB exhaust does come out with a quiet can. They come out with a few different options as well. I like a quiet can. Not only does the GGB can shed the weight about 11 pounds, but it also makes you go faster with that extra horsepower. And it sounds cool to boot. All right, number four are tow hooks. I'm very excited about these tow hooks. It wasn't until I switched over from a skidoo to a Polaris where I figured out basically how to snowmobile and use my legs rather than transferring weight to carve my sled and to maneuver it. So Polaris comes with these tow hooks stock. You can get aftermarket tow hooks. My husband has a skidoo. He installed his tow hooks and honestly, it's just made our riding ability that much more better. It changed the game for me as far as sledding goes because I have a lot of muscle mass in my legs and my butt. This is where a lot of my strength comes from. Most of us ladies, that's where our strength is, is in the lower half. So why not use that with the toe hooks to make our riding that much easier? At least it did for me. I am able to carve using these toe hooks by pulling my foot one way and pushing my other foot on the running board the other way. Honestly, changed the game for me and I did create a video about how you can do a J hook and you can go check that video out after. I'll leave a link here, but honestly, it changed the game for me. Number five is my finger throttle. Now I will tell all of my lady friends, all of my lady shredders that are getting into the sport are or have dabbled into sledding and they're looking for more of an easier handle throttle or looking for an easier position for their throttle. I see it online all the time. A lot of women are asking and I highly recommend the finger throttle. And I only say that because when I switched my thumb throttle to a finger throttle, it was such a pivotal moment in my sledding i remember the day i remember there was powder and i was riding and the finger throttle made me that much more of an aggressive rider i had way more control with my throttle and i had consistent power when i needed it and i could let off when i needed it i just had i just felt like i had way more dexterity is that the word or maneuvering or um connection with my finger to the throttle and i absolutely loved it and like i said it was just a big pivotal moment in my learning curve where everything that i learned at that moment just made sen sense and things just clicked for me it was very exciting it was exciting times that was back in 2018 i remember i remember it all <laughs> Uh, and the reason why I love the, the finger throttle is because I get maximum grip 
when it comes to holding on to my bars, especially when I was learning jumps and dropping cliffs at the time. I wanted to be safe. I wanted to have the power when I needed it. And I wanted to feel like a strong woman with good shoulder and arm strength with the slight bend in my elbow. And I really wanted to feel in control of my machine and the finger throttle allowed me to do so. And those are my five modifications that I have done on my snowmobile to make it custom to fit me perfectly. If you are a short woman rider, please consider one or a few of these modifications onto your snowmobile. I will guarantee you it will make your sledding just a tiny bit easier and a whole lot better. And you get to enjoy your riding, your progression tenfold. Let me know if any of these modifications have got you excited, if there's something that you're gonna add for next season, let me know in the comments below or let me know what you've done to customize your snowmobile that I haven't mentioned. I'm sure it will help another fellow shorter rider as well. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if this is your jam and please share this with your gal pals, with your girlfriend, your wife, or any other woman shredder that's really into sledding or is just getting into the sport. The more that we can learn about customizing our snowmobiles, the better, the less frustrations we go through and the less headaches we go through. If we can just think about ways to customize our sleds can make our riding experience that much better. If you wanna learn more about my handlebar setup, then check that video out next. I give you a tour of all the gadgets, of all the products that I'm using and how I have my handlebar setup beautifully customed to me. This is one of a kind. I go through the pros and I also go through the cons. So go check that out next. And as always, keep killing it safely out there on all of your adventures. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.